videotape is for the general user of a VM integrated system. General users are sometimes called end users as well. If you view a computer as a tool for solving your problems and increasing your productivity, this videotape is for you. As a general user, you may have no special interest in learning how a computer system works inside or how to keep one running smoothly. But you're interested in using a computer for such tasks as creating, editing, formatting and printing files, creating graphics, and communicating electronically with other users of your system. VMIS is a computing system for general users of every kind from plant and office personnel to scientists and engineers. If you are a general user new to VMIS, this videotape will give you an overview of your system. It will prepare you for learning how to use VMIS by introducing you to the information that comes with your system. You'll learn about panels and commands, the two ways you have of telling VMIS what you want it to do including ways of skipping over panels to do a task more quickly and efficiently as you gain skill and experience. Finally, you'll learn what's needed to start using VMIS and you'll become acquainted with some necessary terms. Let's compare a VMIS computing system to the layout of a building. We'll start with the base or foundation. Just as every building needs services, such as heating and lighting, for the benefit of its occupants, the base of every VMIS system has facilities that benefit its users, often on a daily basis. There are ways to create documents, and to edit, format, and print those documents. There are ways to develop charts, and diagrams, and ways to communicate with other VMIS users. Just as a well-designed foundation can support many kinds of buildings, the base of your VMIS system can support several optional features. These optional features are designed to meet the special needs of people working in unique disciplines, like managers and planners, secretaries, accountants, scientists, and engineers. Let's map out an approach you can take to become familiar with this information quickly. We suggest that you start with the Learning to Use Your System series of books. The first of these books is called Getting Started. No matter what special tasks you do to get your job done, you'll find information here that's needed by all VMIS users. For example, it teaches you how to gain access to VMIS. This is called logging on. And getting started shows you how to ask the system for help when in doubt about what to do next. Other books in the Getting Started series refer to the optional features that may be installed on your system. If your system has the text office option, for example, you'll want to review the performing office tasks book for an overview of the many tasks you can perform tasks like creating documents, sending and receiving your mail electronically, and maintaining a schedule or a calendar of events. Each of the Learning to Use Your System books prepares you for using other more detailed books where you will find a full explanation of how to use the optional features installed on your VMIS system. Next, turn to the CMS Primer which teaches users about some topics of general interest, regardless of their specific job assignment. Regardless of the applications you have installed on your particular VMIS system, the CMS Primer will show you, step by step, how to perform some very basic daily tasks, like editing and printing text, and sending and receiving notes and messages. If you often prepare reports and other large documents, you may wish to turn next to a primer called Composing Documents with the Generalized Markup Language. We call this language GML for short. Whether you're writing a short report or updating a complex library of books, use GML anytime you want to create a variety of headings, lists, tables, directories, figures, and footnotes. 
Once you are familiar with using VMIS, you may want to simplify the jobs you do routinely. You can do this with the help of another primer called Writing Simple Programs with Rex. This primer will teach you to write short programs in a language called Rex. These programs can perform a whole sequence of routine commands when you type a single word. Finally, since any electronic or mechanical device can malfunction, you can refer to a primer called Reporting System Problems. This primer teaches general users how to report a problem to their system administrator. It teaches system administrators how to proceed towards solving a problem once it's been reported. In addition, there are other books listed in these VMIS primers which you can refer to for more detailed information. After you've learned to use VMIS, you can also turn to the system itself if you should need help understanding how to proceed. The Help Facility offers you a way of asking your system to display helpful information as you need it. Ask VMIS for help by pressing the PF1 key. Along the bottom of each panel, you'll find a list of PF, or Program Function Keys, and words like Help, which explain what those keys do. This list represents those special numbered keys on your computer terminal or PC keyboard. By typing the PF1 key, which is labeled Help, your system will display information about the panel you are working with. Panels and commands are two ways of getting your system to do what you want it to do. Panels are screens that ask you to make a selection or provide some data. Panels are written in English rather than in a computer language. They're designed to lead you through the steps required to do your job. Here is the panel that appears when you start using VMIS. Notice it's called the primary menu. Primary because it's the first menu you see, and menu because like a restaurant menu, this panel offers you a selection to choose from. For example, if you're brand new to VMIS and would like to read some introductory material, select Introduction. A second panel will appear, and perhaps a third and a fourth, until you arrive at the exact information you want. There are sequences of panels to help you copy a report, develop a business chart, or send a message. Sequences that will lead you through all kinds of simple and complex tasks. Soon you'll be skipping over the panels you use most often. You'll be taking shortcuts through the Go facility, which offers you a way of going straight to the panel you need. Here's a very simple example. Suppose we want to send a note electronically to the member of another department. Let's also assume that our VMIS system is equipped with an optional feature that includes the IBM Professional Office System, or PROFS. Using the complete sequence of panels, we start at the primary menu. We select Communicate. This brings to the screen the Communicate menu. Because our VMIS system is equipped with PROFS, we now select PROFS Note and arrive at the Process Notes and Messages screen. But sending notes and messages is a common daily task. We're familiar with the choices leading to this screen and want to go to it directly. Using the Go facility, we start at the primary menu. This time, we type in Go Profs Note to go directly to the Process Notes and Messages screen, saving ourselves an extra step. Commands are a special language you can use for interacting with VMIS. They are a direct and fast way of working with your system. If you're already familiar with VM and prefer using CMS commands to using panels, you can easily continue using these commands with VMIS. To do this, you simply type CMS on the command line of any VMIS panel. In a moment, you'll see the screen. That's it. You're now ready to use CMS commands. And when you're done, you simply press the Enter key twice to return quickly to the previous VMIS panel. You can also enter CMS commands when you're using a VMIS panel by typing the prefix CMS and the command on the command line. 
Now let's consider how to start using VMIS. That is, how to log on to your VMIS system. Logging on is a bit like opening your safe deposit box. First, you have to identify yourself to the satisfaction of your bank. Then you must provide your own key before getting access to the content of the locked box. VMIS, like a bank, saves and secures the work you've done, your private files, calendar, mail, and so on. And like a bank, VMIS requires you to identify yourself and to provide a password, which is your key to the system. Here's how that's done. Before you can log on to your system for the first time, you must talk with your system administrator. That's the person responsible for keeping your system running smoothly. Let's suppose that John E. Harris is new to your office and that John has asked his system administrator to assign him a user ID. A user ID is the name by which VMIS identifies John and every other user of a VMIS system. Every user ID on a VMIS system is unique. The system administrator has assigned John the user ID J. Harris. Along with this user ID, John has been given a password, a combination of letters and numbers that would be hard for someone else to guess. A password is a user's private key and should be kept private. With his user ID and password, John is now ready to log on to his VMIS system. He simply switches on his display station and waits for the VMIS logo to appear. Under the logo are the words user ID and password, each followed by an arrow. Next to user ID, John types his user ID. Then next to password, he types his password. Notice that the password didn't appear when it was typed. That's so someone passing by can't read it over John's shoulder. John now presses the Enter key. The system now displays this message. Moments later, the VMIS primary menu will appear and he is ready to begin. After logging on to VMIS for the first time, John wants to change his password and memorize it to ensure its security. From the primary menu, John selects System. John will select several more items in a series of panels which are described in detail in your Getting Started book. For now, let's look at the Work with your System Environment panel. From this panel, he selects Log On Environment, and his system will respond to his request. Like John, you'll change your own password periodically to maintain the security of your work. You'll find this procedure explained in the Getting Started book. By now, you know something about the information that comes with your VMIS system. You understand how commands and panels can help you interact with your system. Finally, you know with the user ID and password you receive from your system administrator how to log on to VMIS and start using it. This has been an introduction to VMIS, but the best way to learn about your system is to sit down, enter your user ID and password, and introduce yourself.